Hi, my name is David A. Wheeler. This presentation is an introduction to the Core Infrastructure Initiative, or CII, Best Practices Badge. I hope to convince you that if you're part of an open source software project, you should try to get a Best Practices Badge to help you identify and follow best practices. I also hope to convince you that if you use open source software, you should look for and prefer software that's following best practices and that the CII badge can help you identify such projects. We'll first start with a little history, which I think will help explain why the badge exists. In 2014, the Heartbleed vulnerability was found in the OpenSSL cryptographic library. OpenSSL is widely used, so this vulnerability had a big impact. However, the bigger issue was that when people investigated the OpenSSL project itself, many didn't like what they saw. At the time, the OpenSSL project didn't have a lot of support and failed to apply some widely accepted practices. Defects, including vulnerabilities, can happen to any project, but avoidable problems are something else. In short, the practices used by an open source software project affects its users. It's not true that all open source software is insecure or that all open source software is secure. Similarly, it's not true that all open source software is of poor quality or that all has excellent quality. Instead, open source software tends to be more secure and higher quality if the project follows good practices. Practices aren't enough, of course, because open source software projects need good people to develop the software. But good people aren't enough either. If the project doesn't test the software that the project develops, or it doesn't use version control software, or it doesn't follow other widely accepted good practices, then many avoidable problems typically result. Both creators and users of open source software want good results, so it'd be helpful to encourage identifying those practices and encouraging their use. But what are those good practices? How can we encourage projects to follow them? And how can anyone know if those good practices are being followed by some particular project? This leads us to the CII Best Practices Badge. We identified a set of best practices for producing open source software based on the practices of well-run open source software projects. Each practice increases the likelihood of producing better quality or security. We then turn those practices into a simple set of criteria that can be applied to any open source software project. Some criteria also apply to proprietary software, but many don't because many criteria focus on enabling worldwide review and participation. We also developed a web application that allows open source software projects to self-certify that they meet the criteria. If an open source software project meets the criteria, the project gets a corresponding badge. All of this is at no cost to the open source software projects. We chose self-certification because there are literally millions of open source software projects and self-certification can scale to such sizes. Self-certification systems can have problems, so we countered those problems in a variety of ways. Perhaps the most important is that we automate the process. In a number of cases, we automatically determine if a project meets a criterion. We also require that the answers be public so the public can judge the accuracy of the answers. We do spot checks, and the answers can even be overridden if a project falsifies their answers. As a result, we believe we've developed an approach that scales, it provides good confidence in those answers. The badging project was created by the Linux Foundation's Core Infrastructure Initiative, abbreviated as CII. The Linux Foundation is a nonprofit mutual benefit corporation which already supports a wide variety of open source software projects that you probably use every day, such as the Linux Kernel, JavaScript Foundation, Cloud Native Computing Foundation, and the R Consortium. The badging project is itself an open source software project and you'll be glad to know that we earn our own badge. If you can't remember anything else from this presentation, please remember that if you participate in an open source software project, please go to https colon slash slash bestpractices.coreinfrastructure.org and start the process of getting a badge. What you see here is a quick screenshot of a homepage. You just click on the green button to get started. You can also click on the projects link to see some of the other projects that have or are working on getting a badge. Lots of open source software projects have earned a best practices badge. You're probably using many of these right now. Badge earners include the Linux kernel, Kubernetes, Node.js, and curl. The OpenSSL project has made a number of changes and they've earned a badge too. As I'm speaking, over 1900 open source software projects are now participating in the badging process and over 220 have achieved the passing badge or better. As you can see, 
more being added over time. There are actually three badge levels today, passing, silver, and gold. Any level is an achievement, and the higher level badges require getting the lower level badges. These criteria are based on real world experiences from real projects. The passing criteria are designed to capture what well-run projects typically already do. Today, there are 66 criteria divided into six groups, basics, change control, reporting, quality, security, and analysis. The gold level is the hardest, and it includes some criteria that require multiple developers. For example, the gold level requires that if any one developer is hit by the proverbial bus, the project can simply continue with another developer who is already knowledgeable. The gold level also requires a certain level of two-person review. The passing and silver levels, however, are achievable by even single-person projects. Again, any badge level is an achievement. It's important to understand that these criteria were specifically developed to be reasonable. This slide briefly lists some of the questions we asked before adding any criterion. I'm not going to go into these points in detail, I just want to emphasize that we strive to create reasonable criteria. We also work with a number of projects to develop and review the criteria to make sure they would work in a variety of circumstances. Perhaps most important is what we did not do. We don't require any particular technology, product, or service. For example, we don't require or forbid any particular programming language. We do include tips for some common circumstances, but those are simply suggestions to help people in those common circumstances. One exception is that we do expect projects to have a web page and use TLS to secure web pages because this provides a widely used standard and secure way to get basic information. We never require proprietary software or proprietary service, though projects may choose to use them. Getting a badge doesn't cost anything. We don't take over your project. We simply present the criteria and your project can decide how to meet them, or even if the project should meet them. Most importantly, we don't require that everything be done immediately. Some well-run projects have immediately earned a badge, but most projects find that they're missing a few things. That's not a problem, just fill in the website form with the current state and update it later as you resolve those issues. Here are a few sample criteria. I'm just going to quickly read them to you and hopefully you'll agree that these are reasonable things for an open source software project to do. Note that the criteria use the term FLOSS instead of open source software or OSS, to try to include everyone who develops such software regardless of their motivations. Every criterion has a unique identifier. Identifiers are shown here in square brackets. The project website must succinctly describe what the software does, what problems does it solve. The project must use at least one automated test suite that's publicly released as flaws or open source software. At least one static code analysis tool must be applied to any proposed major production release of the software before its release if there's at least one FLOSS tool that implements this criterion in the selected language. The project sites, the website, the repository, download URLs, must support HTTPS using TLS. The project must publish the process for reporting vulnerabilities on the project site. And I'll note that these criteria are available in English, Chinese, French, German, Japanese, and Russian. Here is some miscellaneous information. As I mentioned earlier, the badging web application automates some steps. When you create a project entry, we try to automatically fill in information, and when a project entry is edited, we reject information that's obviously incorrect. That makes the badging process simpler and more accurate. Some larger organizations already require badges in some cases, including the Open Network Automation Platform and the Cloud Native Computing Foundation. This shows at least some organizations think that the badge is worth getting. The badge application makes it easy to display badge information. For example, projects on GitHub can easily modify their README to display their current badge status. We have a REST API and support cross-origin resource sharing, also known as cores. The REST API and cores make it easy to get display information for specialized needs, for example, to support specialized dashboards. Many projects have said that getting a badge has been very helpful. The OWASP ZAP project knew that they should have automated testing, but the desire to get a badge helped them to turn that aspiration into a reality. The Common Mark project implemented HTTPS for their website and published how to report vulnerabilities to their project. The library JSON for modern C++ added information on how to privately report errors and added a static analysis check to their continuous integration script. These changes weren't 
difficult, and the JSON for modern C++ projects said that they appreciated that these changes could be even done by hobby projects. In conclusion, are you involved in an open source software project? If you are, I strongly encourage you to try to get a badge for your project. Simply start the badging website, https colon slash slash bestpractices.coreinfrastructure.org. Don't wait until you're ready. Simply get started and you can see what, if anything, is left to do. If you have questions, send us an email or create an issue using the link at the bottom of every web page. If you're looking at using open source software, you should prefer to use open source software from projects that are applying best practices. Such projects are trying to do the right thing, and you want to use open source software from projects like that. It can be time consuming to evaluate projects this way, so the CII Best Practices branch can help you identify such projects. We've done our best to create good criteria, but nothing's perfect. If you think the criteria need additions or refinements, let us know. The Best Practices Badge project is itself an open source software project, so we'd love to hear from you. If you want additional information, the URLs shown here should help. The bottom line is get or check on Best Practices Badges for open source software on https colon slash slash bestpractices.coreinfrastructure.org. Thank you for your time.